Hello everyone. In this video, we will be solving a queen quadrantic equation to celebrate the 50k milestone. Yes, you heard it right. The equation is a queen quadrantic equation. Thank you for the support and keep up the good work. Let's get started. We have sine y to the power 50th power minus x to the 50th power equals 1. And we're going to be solving for x and y values. Now, what makes this equation really interesting is that first of all, it's a 50k special. Second, it is an equation with two variables, x and y. But we're not looking for integer solutions necessarily. So when you see an equation like this, some of you are probably thinking, hey, can I use difference of two squares? Sure. 50 is an even number, therefore you can factor this using difference of two squares. But not only that, you can also factor this using a difference of 50th powers, which can then turn into, you know, sine y minus x times something else. But none of those I'll be using in my solution. My solution will be different. So I'm going to be adding x to the 50th to both sides. So my equation is going to look like this. Now, if you look at the right hand side carefully, you're going to notice that x to the 50th power, if x is a real number, of course, cannot be negative, right? Because 50 is even. So we can safely say that x to the 50th is always greater than or equal to zero. By adding 1 to both sides of this inequality, you get that x to the 50th power, not 5th, x to the power 50 plus 1 is always greater than or equal to 1. In other words, this is going to be the minimum value for real x values. The minimum value for the right hand side is going to be 1. What about the left hand side? On the left hand side, we have a trigonometric function. So this is not only queen quadrantic, but it is also trigonometric. So this is kind of like a queen quadrantic trigonometric equation. Okay, that would probably be more uh, an interesting name. But anyways, I keep saying the word, so let me go ahead and write it down. Queen quadrantic. All right. So that is the equation we have. On the left-hand side, we do have sine. And what do you know about the sine and cosine functions? They're bounded, right? So I can safely say that sine y is always, of course, if y is a real number. If not, then things get crazy. Sine of y is always going to be between negative 1 and 1 inclusive. But we don't have sine y. We have to raise this to the 50th power. But just like with sine squared, because 50 is even, when you raise, this expression to the 50th power, you're going to get something that is not negative, right? So it's going to be greater or equal to zero, but at the same time, it is going to be less than or equal to one. Great. So now we got two inequalities. Let's go ahead and put those together. I got this one and this one. So one of the inequalities tells me that if you consider this equation, of course, one of the inequalities tells me that the left-hand side is less than or equal to 1, which means the maximum value for the left-hand side is 1. And the other inequality tells me that the greater, uh, the minimum value is 1. So how is that possible that one side is greater or equal to 1, the other side is less than or equal to 1? The only way they can intersect is if they're both equal to 1. So these two inequalities imply two equations. First sine y to the 50th power equals 1 and x to the power 50 plus 1 equals 1. They both have to equal to the same number. And from here we get x to the 50th power equals 0, which indicates x is equal to 0. Great, so that's one of the solutions. Well, actually, I shouldn't say one of the solutions because I haven't found the solution yet. There are two variables, so we found the x. How do you find the y value? Well, if you consider this equation, you can take the 50th root of both sides, but when you do, you have to deal with the absolute value. In other words, there are two numbers whose 50th power equals positive 1. 
one of them is one and the other one is negative one great so let's go ahead and find the y values from here you know with trigonometric equations we always tend to use the unit circle because it's super duper helpful so let's go ahead and draw a unit circle a radi uh, a circle with radius one centered at the origin now as you know sine values are given on the y-axis so in order for sine to be one you have to be here so we're basically talking about a 90 degree angle or in radius it's pi over 2 so I can safely say that y is equal to pi over 2 plus 2 and pi of course you're allowed to add multiples of 2 pi if you want a specific solution or particular solution then it'll be pi over 2 the other value is going to be coming from here because sine can only be negative 1 at 3 pi over 2 and we add the multiples of 2 pi again uh, it's okay to use the same variables because every time you're going to be dealing with a different branch so it doesn't really matter so those are going to be the answers for why let's go ahead and put these together and then write our solutions as an ordered pair so in other words if x is equal to 0 then y can be pi over 2 and I'm just going to consider the particular solutions here, not the whole thing. Obviously, you can add multiples of 2 pi all the time. Or I'm going to be getting something like 3 pi over 2 when x is 0. Of course, x needs to be 0 first. The y is going to be 3 pi over 2. Therefore, between 0 and 2 pi, this equation has two solutions. And these are the solutions as an ordered pair. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.